a little bit of a follow-up on the ProMaster here. Um, I put the new transmission in it, right? Here's the old transmission. That's what was busted off of it right here. Uh, come to find out, when I put this transmission in, um, when I go to jack it up, to bolt in these, the mount was like here, so the whole thing had to come this way. I'm like, why? Why is this like this? I looked over here, and that engine mount, it was completely out. And it was actually resting. I don't know if you can see it. It's too bright. You see right, right here? That's where it was resting. So the only thing holding this van or uh, this engine in was literally the exhaust on the K member and probably the wiring harness. And I was under there the whole time. <laughs> but I uh, got the new one in and uh, repaired the cable. And uh, all those brackets down there were bent. I had to straighten them all out because it was hanging on that as well. And the dog bone mount, which is underneath, was uh, broken as well. I had to replace that. And I replaced one ball joint on this side. And the battery was completely dead. And I did have it started, and in the other video, I don't know if you remember, it was smoking. New battery, just put it in. Ground cable. And it was sparking a lot when I hooked this up. Probably still spark a lot. You see how it sparks a lot? So, that's the negative side. Got it running real quick just to see if I can get it running. And uh, smoke just pouring out of the alternator. So, now I gotta wait for an alternator. Uh, now I'm just gonna pull that alternator out. And uh, it's a shame this doesn't have a, an electric water pump because I would just put my battery maintainer on it and uh, run it just to, to get the transfluid temperature uh, situated. But that, al that alternator is shorted for sure. Yeah, there's the alternator. I don't know if there's any other damage. I mean, this thing is hanging on by the wiring harness, so <clears throat> who knows? But yeah, smoke was pouring out of the alternator there. If we had smell vision you'd be able to smell what I'm smelling. But this looks pretty easy to belt. Uh, it looks okay, I guess. Yeah, there's the dog mount that I had to replace. It does have an exhaust leak from where the impact hit. I don't know if I'm going to be re replacing this, welding it up or not. It's going to be a little sketchy with some of this stuff. It might be better off just sending it to an exhaust shop. I'm very capable of doing this, but at the same time, I really don't feel like having a bunch of broken stuff. All right, this looks fairly simple. Famous last words. After push it that way, pull it, slip that off. It spins, um, but this pulley has to come off. It looks like a 13 mil. I would have to pull this uh, the compressor <coughs> away. Give me a little more room. Yeah, see, that's where the pulley was. You got off. And you got a bolt there. Right there. Take that off, and then we'll find the other ones. I got that bolt out. You don't have to take it out. It's got a slot. I'll put it back in later, but I just took it out anyway. But up here. Up. Right. Jesus Christ. Right there. There's two. One there and one there. Those two bolts. It looks like it looks like it's a bracket, so hopefully it's just those two bolts and then it'll come free. Alternator's loose, got the two bolts loose, all right? 
of it. So now I'm just gonna uh, take the bolts out of the compressor and give me some, some more access and it should come right out. All right, got it hanging here. Three 13 millimeter bolts, one here, uh, up here, right there, and then this one on top. Should give you enough room. Hopefully get it out. Take these bolts out so they're not fighting me. Maybe they're gonna fight me anyway. I still gotta take the power power off the back. I wonder if you can see if anything can melt it. Alright, no big deal. I'm just gonna get those connectors off and then it'll be done. Got it disconnected. I don't think I'm strong enough to do this one-handed. I'm gonna I'm not strong enough. I used to be much stronger. She is warm. I do want to check continuity to ground just to make sure that um, the main battery cable's not shorted since this engine was basically falling out. Well, you can kind of tell that was that got hot. That got real hot. 1.2 meg between that and there. So we're good. And you got the new alternator. You can throw it up. Oh, in belt's on. Everything tight. All right. Time to let it down and see if it catches on fire. Cool. Okay. Oh, shut up. Mm -hmm. Sounds lovely. I don't see no smoke. I don't see any smoke. The charging light is out. Okay. So now I gotta let it warm up and then um, check the fluid level. Code scan, fire pressure. Yeah, that light's on. ABS, battery voltage, blah, blah, blah. Brake booster. I got. 14.7 PCM control signal stored 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 they're all stored nothing in the PCM let's go in here and look at my temperature so I can get the uh, transmission level taken care of trans oil temperature I forget what it is it's like 140 degrees or something 140 uh, when I have to check it so I'm gonna go check service information real quick All right, 107 degrees. I want to get it up to closer to 200. I believe it's overfilled right now. Uh, I might have put a quart extra in there by accident, but we'll suck that out. So the first drive, uh, those flashing lights that you're seeing is the camera, not the actual car. Nothing's flashing except for the uh, time. Like the uh, tire thing is not flashing. Ooh. And that's shifting. And this thing feels like driving a spaceship, but it feels very strange. Kind of uncomfortable.
degrees. We still got a little to go. Just want to drive it around a little bit and then uh, bring it back in the shop and I will check everything else. All right, I adjusted the level. It's about, what is it? It's 164 degrees. So going off of the chart, um, right around 40 millimeters. So you get your handy dandy tool. You gotta take this uh, degas bottle. There's one bolt, and then you pull it off of the and pull it to the side. And down there, there's a there's a cap that you have to get off. It's actually easier to get the cap off when you're underneath this thing because uh, my hands are super weak. But you put your dipstick in until it bottoms out, and then you pull it right out and you read it. And we're right at 40 millimeters, right within spec. So I'll put the cap back on it, and I'll put it back on, put the splash shield on, and check for that leak. And, and this guy can be on his way. <laughs> 